Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial we are going to be doing our last winter themed tumbler for the season. I apologize for the raspiness of my voice. I'm getting over a cold but we still got a hustle y'all so <laughs> here we go. To get this started we are using a 32 plump from the Steel Magnolia and I will briefly show the colors of the spray paint that I'm using here, but I will list them in the description below for y'all. I am using four different colors and we are just going to go back and forth with all four colors and blend them as best as we possibly can. I'm not going over it too much because it's a lot easier said than done to get a good spray paint ombre. The paints do not perform very well in the winter. As you can see, I tossed that one because it was not working good. And also mid recording, our outdoor cat come along and caught a lizard while I was trying to record, had himself some lunch on camera and then peaced out. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So here's the result. Your spray painting technique does not have to be perfect. The key in this is to have a good quality glitter and a good ombre. And I'm going to show you both of those in this tutorial. So I'm using about one and a half milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy to apply a very thin layer to this cup to give us some adhesive to apply our glitter. I'm using epoxy because it gives a longer work time and you're definitely going to want that extra time when using multiple colors to do an ombre. I'm using multiple colors from PDB glitters and I am using little medicine cups in my Lynn from the Design Lingo. You'll see that I mix every one of these with a different glitter. And the reason I'm doing that is because I didn't have any that would give a really perfect transition. A couple of these are metallic and then a couple more opal. And I wanted to mix them into each other. So they would all have that same effect. You don't have to do this. Of course, you can just use five different color glitters or you can, if you have a really nice ombre with your spray paint, you can just take an opal white and go over the whole thing and get the same effect as we're going for here. Mix them all up and then it was time to apply them to the tumbler. Now I did mix a lot. <laughs> so I did also do a second tumbler which you will see later in the tutorial. It is a 24 ounce plump, also from the Steel Magnolia. We're gonna begin our ombre by applying the first color to the bottom of the tumbler. I did apply it pretty thick around the rim and the bottom, and I'm holding it about a foot and a half away from the tumbler and very, very lightly sprinkling that on. We're basically giving ourselves a little bit of a base making sure that we put our colors in the correct areas and then we are going to just build this up as we go. And this little thing that you see holding all of my glitters is amazing. You saw it in my last tutorial and I really love that it helps me keep all of my glitters organized, especially when doing an ombre like this or a Milky Way. It keeps them in order and it keeps me from knocking and spilling glitter everywhere <laughs> with all of the open bottles or little cups sitting around. Now I'm going to let this just play through so you can see how I begin to build up all of this glitter. In this second round of glitter, you are going to see that I'm going just a little bit heavier on the coverage and I'm also starting to go into the next and the previous color a little bit. 
and that is what's going to help start give us that really nice subtle ombre blending those colors really really well Once I have achieved the look that I was going for, then I just set this to the side for about four hours. Again, I'm using a little extra ink epoxy and it dries really quickly. And then I went over with two heavy coats of Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat, allowed that to dry, and then epoxied twice with a little extra ink epoxy. And here are my beautiful shiny tumblers. I purchased my images from Etsy and I downloaded some from my subscription with Creative Fabrica. I will link both of these below for y'all. If you want to see how to use a print and cut feature on your Cricut program, I will also link the tutorial for the Winter Wonderland Tumblr. I went into lots of detail on how to compose a forest image or a scene in that tutorial so that will be really helpful if you have not checked that out all right so for the 24 plump i am just using this image it was actually listed as a ornament image i think maybe maybe not <laughs> but it's like 4.25 inches and i created a 0.35 offset in a textured silver vinyl that we are going to apply around this as a really pretty border to make it stand out from the tumbler. I just center that, apply it down in the center, and then work my way out to the edges. You can use the hinge method for this. Um, you just wanna do whatever works to avoid getting any bubbles underneath this printable vinyl. Now, I would highly suggest giving this a good two coats of Rust-Oleum Matte Clear to seal in that printable vinyl. Throw a layer of epoxy on there and use some transfer tape to be able to apply this circle. I did not do that and you can see it <laughs> gave me so much trouble. I was confident that I would be able to apply this without issues. I was sadly mistaken, so. Anyway, two clear coats, epoxy, and then decal so that you don't end up on the struggle bus with me. <laughs> okay, moving along. So for the 32 plump, I have my little scenery here. I was going for like a little mystical mountain scene. I'm going to trim off all of this excess backing so it does not get in my way. And then we are going to apply these using the hinge method. Now you will see that I do line these up on the tumbler to sort of map out how I want them applied. There's not really any rhyme or reason. I just wanted them to overlap a little bit and for there not to be any gaps. I did end up with a small gap in the end and I just cut a little bitty um, set of trees and filled in that gap. 
make sure you have these lined up nice and straight before you begin applying them to your tumbler. Now take your time. That is the biggest thing that I can say with these because it is pretty tedious. It takes a while to use the print and cut and it's a lot harder to remove these from the cup without damaging them than just like a regular piece of printed vinyl. And once I got over halfway around the cup, I did remove the backing just so actually it was just getting in my way <laughs> so I removed it and it was much easier to rub that down without having that stiff backing in the way I did the same thing with the second piece I just lined it up trimmed off the edge and made sure that it was nice and straight I removed the backing and applied that and made sure that all around the edges that it is touching the other decal that it was pressed down really well so that when I apply epoxy there's no way for it to seep down in between the two decals. I applied the moon and the little birds around it and also went back and applied the little set of trees in that gap that we had from the first two decals. Once I had all of my images on, I took Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat and gave these a really good two coats, allowed that to dry for about 30 to 45 minutes, and then I began applying my epoxy. I have a pretty thin layer of a little extra ink epoxy on my tumblers, and I'm mixing about five milliliters of epoxy with black pearl mica from pdb studios and i'm going to apply that under the mountains to help blend them into the bottom of this tumbler and since there are a lot of blues in this i also come in with beautiful and added that in to the black and applied that as well this helped give it a little bit of a blue shimmer it's hard to see in this video, I had so much light coming in, but it really helped pull everything together. Now, instead of using acrylic paints to add some snowflakes on this, I wanted to use glitter. So I used Yeti from PDB and added that into my epoxy and applied that in the sky and a little bit over the mountains as well. And then on the 24 ounce, I just applied that around the center circle and the customer decal that was on the back side. Now, since I applied glitter in this coat, I did apply a, another thin layer of epoxy on top. Once that dried, I sanded down really well to give it a nice finish and applied a final layer of a little extra ink epoxy and these were ready to go. I really love how these turned out and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Everything that I used will be listed in the description below as well as some discount codes for you guys. Our tutorials here are going to start becoming more often and I have some pretty exciting news for 2022 so stay tuned for that. Don't forget that we do have a Facebook group that is also linked below. I love seeing everything that you guys create especially if you have watched one of my tutorials so definitely join there. We are also on Instagram where we have lots of fun and giveaways. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you want to be notified anytime a new tutorial drops. And I will see y'all next time. Bye.